Oh boy, you know what time it is. Hoo-wee! YouTube, what's going on? My name is The Second Flock, and I have not made a video in a very long time. Especially not with my face. But today is April Fool's Day, and as such, the internet was filled with April Fool's jokes. Unfortunately, I did not have time to corrals and browse what Google or any other site may have done this year, but I did catch late at night uh, that Rick and Morty Season 3's premiere was being streamed online by Cartoon Network and played on their show. Um, it's the best kind of April Fool's joke because it's a reverse April Fool's joke, and I wanted to talk about it a little bit. So, this is actually a new episode. It's still streaming right now. It's going back and forth with almost no commercials. Um, instead of showing the regular anime night, they're just playing the Rick and Morty Season 3 premiere. Um, the season won't be ready for a while. It won't premiere again for a while, so... The joke may be in that you hear a Rick and Morty season premiere just came on randomly, and you don't believe it, and it's actually there. Or the joke could be, if you didn't happen to catch it, you're a few months behind. This episode it picks up right where they left off. It starts with a funny little joke. They tease that they're not going to show what happens, how Rick escapes prison. And then they do. I don't want to give too many spoilers to go too much into it, but... It deals a lot with the darker side of the character relations between the different members of the family. A lot changes. A lot happens in the 20 minute time span. There's a lot of action going on. Um, and a lot of funny-ish dialogue, but also a few dark moments. Um, one of the big payoffs, there's a moment where you actually stop for a moment and you get a little very emotional. And, uh, you know, that's something I was... It's great how they can keep doing that and pacing with everything. And I feel like that's a payoff that you've been building up to in this series for a while. The little, like, inches and edges and the way that these adventures wear down on the characters is adding up. And despite it being a comedy, there's a darker side to it. So there's a moment that's supposed to be a big payoff where you learn something about Rick um, and his past. And it's dark. And it turns out to be a... Spoiler alert. turns out to be a fabrication uh, that's not real. So... I feel like that was a one really great moment that was sort of ruined by the fact that it's not real, but it leads into a bunch of funny other stuff. Um, and you see some of these dark advancements based on the character relationships. Uh, I don't want to spoil what happens, but the family dynamic changes a little bit. They bring up a lot of things from previous seasons, which I think is great for the premiere. Um, they bring up the other dimension where Rick and Morty used to come from. They're like C-137. Uh, they do a lot with that. They do a lot with the Intergalactic, Feder Intergalactic Federation, as well as the Rick and Morty base or force of all the Ricks from all the different universes. And it really solidifies um, which Rick is the main Rick, the main Rick that we follow. And sometimes in some of the moments, I even felt a little weird, like this... One, the Morty is bringing up the fact that he's not the original Morty of the universe they live in now. Um, and that that's a little touching and dark. And then at the end of the episode, uh, Rick has sort of a repeat of the end of the first season's first episode where he's talking about all the adventures they're going to go on and talk. he mentions that this season is going to be their darkest adventure set yet. And I'm looking forward to that. If half the episodes of this season have as much action and production value and great writing as this, I'll be very pleased if six episodes out of the 12 or 15 that they're doing can manage that, I'm fine, and that the rest are just like regular Rick and Morty episodes, it's fine, because this is definitely a step above. It was like the finale that packed so much into once. The only downside I say with this episode, besides the one tension emotional moment, is um, the series 2 ends with a cliffhanger that seems dark and emotional and driven by a character's growth, of Rick's growth. And then by the end of the first episode here, it seems to be all but reverse. It seems to be, it was all along not for the family at all and he really doesn't care about them. I don't know if, uh, based on the rant at the end, he clearly comes out and says that he doesn't care about the family. Uh, but it also seems like a joke, so I don't know, I can't tell whether he actually did it for the family and came up with a plan later to escape, or if he turned himself in for the family. Which I suppose is an interesting dynamic, but 
by now I, I'd like them not to have played with that. I suppose it's great because you can t interpret it the other way, but the way they sort of say that he doesn't care about the family, you know, if he'd said it like that, it'd be a little depressing, but also good, good storytelling. But they do it sort of layered in this joke, you'll see whenever you see the premiere. Um, at the very end, when he goes on the rant about not caring about the family and what his real goals are. It's all a joke. The way he, they're, they're saying it, it's supposed to be funny, and... Just... It doesn't feel like the way to steer away your audience. It feels like you're tugging on them and poking fun at them. And, like, you can't get a sense of what's actually happening with that. Uh, you don't know whether to take it seriously, which, it's Rick and Morty, but there are elements that you're supposed to take seriously in the show, and I thought that was one of them. The way that they sort of did the reversal of his emotions was blatantly just not fulfilling. So, I give the premiere a 9 out of 10. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you later. Hello everyone, I'm still here. I had a quick amendment to this review, taken about... 10 minutes after I filmed it, uh, I wanted to amend the score to an 8 out of 10, mostly because I the 9 out of 10 was based on hype, like, oh, Rick and Morty's back, and really, you know, 5 minutes later, I'm like, 8 out of 10, really, it's, it's a strong, good episode, but it's not a 9. Uh, secondly, stay after the credits. I'm doing you a favor.